Good day, everyone. And it is a good day because you've chosen to join us at our worship service on this Earth Day, April the 18th. You will notice that this service today is brought to you by the elders of this church, not only by the elders, by Ruth, who did the, prep the preparation work, by Deborah, who keeps the premises clean and keeps us healthy, by our music team, which you will hear more from later, and from the technical wizards at the back who will be beaming this out to you. Also, we couldn't do this without the continuing support of our congregation, their faithful offering of prayers and time and talents and their monetary offerings, which keep this building in good repair and enable us to continue the ministry of this congregation, not only in our local community, but way around the world. We are connected. We are not separate, we're not apart. We are connected. Will you join me now um, in the call to worship, which you'll find on your screen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to you. The Lord, the living God, is Lord, creator of all, sustainer and ruler of the universe. We hold, we hold in, in reverence the whole of creation as, as the theater, theater of God's glory and action. Though life is a gift from God, human life depends upon the created world. Our, Our care, care for the world must, must reflect God's, God's care. care. Our stewardship calls us to explore ways of love and justice, respecting God's creation, and in seeking its responsible use for the common good. We acknowledge, we acknowledge God, God as, as creator, creator and, and Lord, Lord and now, and now joyously join our voices and hearts in praise and worship. Please join me now as we sing hymn number 328. This is my maker's world. is a song of praise to you, dear Lord. Your hands are upon all living things upon the earth. But we have forgotten that you expected us to take responsibility for the earth and all that is in it. We have alienated ourselves from the unfolding cosmos 
estranged ourselves from the interconnectedness of God's earth. We have sought our own security and comfort. We have exploited creation for our own needs. Please forgive us for our short-sighted and self-absorbed ways. Help us to sing a new creation song. Let us see earth as children of the earth. Give us clear vision, O God, and grant us the knowledge to make tough choices for the health of our world. Help us to be the stewards you wanted us to be so that we can take courageous actions to address the problems of air pollution, climate change, and water challenges. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus the Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, Our Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please join me now in reading responsibly from Psalm 104, verses 1 to 14. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, wrapped in light as with a garment. You stretch out the heavens like a tent. You set the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot. You, you ride, ride on, on the wings, wings of, of the wind. wind. You make the winds your messengers. Fire, Fire and flame your ministers. ministers. You set the earth on its foundations so that it shall never be shaken. You, you cover, cover it with, with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke they flee. At the sound of your thunder they take to flight. They rose up to the mountains, ran down to the valleys, to the place that you appointed for them. You set, you set a boundary that they, that they may, may not pass, pass so, so that, that they might not, not again cover the earth. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow between the hills. Giving drink to every wild animal, the wild asses quench their thirst. By the streams, the birds of the air have their habitation. They sing among the branches. From your lofty abode, you water the mountains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. You cause the grass to grow for the cattle and plants for people to use. To bring forth food from the earth. And then continuing in Psalm 148, Please join me in reading verses 1 to 6. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise, Praise him, him, all his angels. Praise, Praise him, all his hosts. Host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let, Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded, and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Let us hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God for this word to us today. And now to continue in our Earth Day worship, please join us in singing, God is good in earth and sky.
This iconic picture was taken December 1972 from the Apollo 17 spacecraft when the astronauts were about 30,000 miles from the Earth. The image has been called the blue marble. You can see why. The beauty of this image is captivating. Can you imagine what it must have felt like for those three astronauts looking back at Earth from the perspective of what they had always thought of as heaven? Consider that for a moment. This is the Earth as God would see it. At the time, the crew remarked that they only saw one world with no artificial boundaries for nations or territories. That round marble was the home of all living organisms. The, astrona the astronauts returned to Earth with a renewed sense of hope that people could set aside political, national, and ideological differences to unite to make the world a better place. They saw the potential of people working together to improve life for all. At the time that picture was taken, almost 50 years ago, there was little anticipation about the environmental crisis we are now facing. Those astronauts were thinking about ending the Cold War and the arms race. However, perhaps now, more than ever before, we need to see ourselves as human beings of one world, working together to repair God's creation for the good of all. Today is Earth Sunday, a day to pause and think about this beautiful creation. Today's message is about the importance of each of us becoming agents of creation and recreation. We are the children of God and have been entrusted to preserve and protect all that God has created. Many of you will recognize this book. It's called Living Faith and it's a statement of belief of the Presbyterian Church in Canada. Section 2.4 of Living Faith is entitled, Our Care for Our World. If, uh, if some of the words sound familiar that we're about to read, uh, it's because many of them were included in the, the uh, call to worship. Let's look at this. Though life is a gift from God, Human life depends on the created world. Our care of the world must reflect God's care. We are not the owners, but the stewards of God's good earth. Concerned with the well-being of all life, we welcome the truths and insights of all human skill and science about the world and the universe. Our stewardship calls us to explore ways of love and justice in respecting God's creations and in seeking its responsible use for the common good. I'm now going to focus on uh, four key phrases from section 2.4 of Living Faith. The first one is, human life depends on the created world. Responding to climate change, water shortages, contaminated air, and many other difficulties is not optional. Our very existence depends upon making changes that will reduce the detrimental effects that human impact has had on the earth. Our lives depend on making significant and sustainable changes quickly. It is truly a matter of life and death. Second, our, world, our care of the world must reflect God's care. I'm fascinated when I hear about the intricacies of the earth that God made. For, uh, for example, last year at the Knox Book Club, we watched a documentary on the new discoveries scientists have made about life of forests. It seems that the mycelium, the roots of fungus, that live among the roots of trees have the capacity for sharing and exchanging nutrients. If one tree is thriving and another is not, 
the mycelium will transport the required food to the tree in need. It is estimated that 90% of land plants are in a mutually beneficial relationship with fungi. As if that weren't enough, the mycelium has powerful abilities to break down harmful carbons, oils, and other toxins. I find that kind of thing just amazing and awesome in the true sense of the word awesome. I suspect there's so much that we do not know about how God has interwoven the earth systems together that it is imperative that we respect and nurture the world in ways that reflect God's care. We need to be kind and gentle with this magnificent interconnected web of all creation. That brings us to the next point. We are not owners, but stewards of God's good earth. As a child listening to the King James Version of the Bible, I heard that God gave man dominion over the earth and all living creatures. That confused me. But as an adult reading Genesis in the Message Translation, the idea of stewardship seems more apparent. In the message, it states that human beings reflect God's nature so that we can be responsible for earth itself. That wording makes a lot more sense to me. It suggests reverence, humility, and service. My generation was especially at fault with our desire for bigger and better, with little understanding or concern for the impact of our behavior. We lived in a disposable society. We purchased, we consumed, and then what we had, we didn't want anymore. We threw it away and started the cycle all over again. We acquired, we used, we discarded. We traded stewardship for consumership. Further, we allowed corporations to disregard the preciousness of the earth, the water, and the air without building in the, necess the necessary safety for the environment that would include plans for waste disposal and redevelopment. We are now paying a huge price for those mistakes. As stewards of the earth, we need to take responsibility now for making much better choices. Lastly, excuse me while I have a drink here. Lastly, section 2.4 in Living Faith says, Concerned with the well-being of all life, we welcome the truths and insights of all human skill and science about the world and the universe. I find great hope in that belief state, statement. To me, it recognizes and underscores the great God-given capacity of human beings as innovators and problem solvers. For example, the mycelium that take nutrients from one tree to another can be harvested and make sustainable building materials. When mixed with corn stalks and sawdust, basically the leftovers from other activities, the mycelium can be shaped into bricks or other configurations and used as organic building material. This is a sustainable and responsible innovation. There are new technologies and inventions coming all the time that will be useful in addressing the wide variety of urgently needed solutions to our environmental problems. Now, even the once maligned corporations talk about the triple bottom line. Rather than just being focused solely on profits, the triple bottom line elevates social needs and environmental sustainability on an equal platform with profitability. We have a long uphill climb to right the wrongs of the past, but I feel optimistic about possibilities. I just pray that we have the wisdom to move fast enough. Let us now turn our attention to the actions of the Presbyterian Church. As far back as 1976, the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church in Canada has been advocating for attention and action 
about caring for the environment. Even though we are a relatively small denomination covering a large geographic area, our church governance feels that it is important to put some of our limited resources toward addressing the statement of beliefs that we just reviewed. A section of the justice ministry of the Presbyterian Church in Canada deals with ecological justice. Its focus is to advocate in the areas of climate change, sustainable land, and energy use. Further, the Presbyterian Church in Canada is a participating member of Kairos, an interfaith organization whose mission it is to take faithful action for peace, ecological justice, and human rights. The Kairos network is global and works to address the impacts of resource extraction, protection of water and watersheds, and building sustainable alternatives. Endless growth is, not, is no longer viable. Production must be determined by social needs and ecolo ecological balance. A new initiative endorsed by the Presbyterian Church in Canada is called For the Love of Creation. Congregations and individuals are asked to join the 2021 Faith in Action campaign. Between now and Thanksgiving, individuals are invited to make a pledge, not a financial pledge, but a, a pledge, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, stand in solidarity with justice-seeking communities, and show support for increased federal climate actions. All of these are exciting initiatives. If you want to explore these further, a list of the places, the organizations I've cited today will be listed in your announcements. I want to highlight now some uh, sustainable initiatives here at Knox King Garden. When the sanctuary was closed last spring, the Board of Managers seized the opportunity to replace all of the fluorescent lighting throughout the church with LED fixtures. In total, 87 lights were replaced. Not only will this reduce our electricity use and save the church money, but also the lights are brighter and last longer. Further, the amount of paper and ink as well as electricity to operate the photocopier has been lessened since it was decided to send out the announcements via email. When we are able to resume worshiping together again, the order of service will be projected on the screens at the front of the sanctuary. Rather than producing many bulletins that are used once and discarded, only a few will be copied, thus further reducing waste. Speaking of waste reduction, we need to congratulate ourselves a little bit Think of the thousands of items that would, were not sent to landfill because of all the years the Knox Flea Market provided opportunities for recycling. If you have ideas to enhance sustainable practices that could be implemented, at, implemented here at the church or in households, please share them with the church office or your elder. We will circulate them in the announcements. In closing, I just have one further thought. One important lesson learned from the last 14 months of this pandemic is that we can change our habits. On this Earth Sunday, we urgently need to take action to address the needs of our Earth. We can become responsible stewards. We can learn how to do things in more sustainable ways concerned with the well-being of all things, if we each do a little bit, we, have, we can have a big impact. To God be the glory. Amen. Let us now continue our worship in prayer. Let us pray together. O oh God of all creation, we pray for the people suffering the consequences of a warming planet. We pray for thirsty people. 
where there is drought or no access to clean water. Quench their thirst. We pray for people who are hungry, where rains do not fall, where soil nutrients have been stripped away, and where people have no access to arable land. Give them suitable land to plant and harvest. We pray for the scientists, the government officials, and the business people. Embolden them to make decisions that will mitigate the impacts of climate change all over the world, but especially in countries that are already suffering with poverty and COVID-19. We pray for all people who struggle to transform unsustainable systems into thriving communities that reflect your love for creation. And now in the silence of our hearts, we pray for those known to us who are struggling and for whom your comfort is needed. And lastly, we pray for this congregation as we anticipate the arrival of Reverend Dan West as our new minister and the nomination and election of new elders. And at this time of this pandemic, please be with us all. Amen. And now let us sing together hymn 717, We Cannot Own the Sunlit Sky. The mystery of human existence is that we belong to God and have been made in his divine image. In God we live and move and have our being. Creator God, our lives must reflect your love and the purpose for all creation. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of us every day. Amen.
is the cross.